Hola, comadres. Welcome back to another episode of Comadreando. We're starting season six. It's been quite a long hiatus. I know some of you have been complaining. However, today we're kicking off the season with an amazing episode featuring some dope, amazing bomb women. And I will let them introduce themselves. Who are you? We can start with Susan and then we'll just go around. My name is Susan Garcia and I am a small business owner. Um, I own Create a Cocktail. It is a do-it-yourself mixology uh, service class where I teach you how to uh, make your own drink. Um, and I also have a bartending service where I do the tri-state area and Miami. Uh, I do it with my daughter. So she's in Miami while I'm here in this dreary New Jersey. <laughs> I have a five-year-old um, child on the spectrum. He's a boy. I also have two neurotypical older children. And um, this is my first journey. So I'm trying to learn from Marcy and other moms. And I'm just here to absorb, take everything. Amazing. <laughs> okay, next person, Denise. Hi, um, <laughs> I'm Denise. Uh, I have uh, two children. Um, my son is nine years old. He's on the spectrum. And I also have a daughter. Um, and she is, has some neurological, um, rare disease disorder. Um, and I am a stay at home mom to my two beautiful kids. And I am also, um, I feel kind of like not a newbie on the journey, but definitely when I'm stepping into the comadreando space with Marcy, I'm like, I have a lot to learn. So <laughs> I'm glad to be here with you guys. And then our last guest, Belen. My name is Belen. I am a behavior analyst from Phoenix, Arizona. I work in um, the early intervention space in ABA. Um, and I am a step parent to two little mm. neurotypical cuties. Oh, amazing. Uh -huh. All right. So ladies, thank you so much for being on the show. Number one. Um, I always like to tell the comadres how I met my guests. So Susan and I co connected via Instagram. Um, she was a fan of the show. Then we like started talking. Um, we're actually planning an event probably this winter, um, coming up. Then Denise and I, besides being connected through the show, we're also Kundalini yoga practitioners. And we have done a couple of um, 40 day sadhanas together. And then Belen, I was on a like a rampage, like following all these BCBAs. And I finally found one that was bilingual, which is hard. Like I didn't know that that was like a rare thing. So yeah, so I found Belen and I was like, oh my God. And then our topic literally fell into our lap was it last weekend susan mm -hmm. or was it like monday or something it was something like monday or, or the like weekend it, yeah 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 that um we all it was like this viral story about this mom mm -hmm. um regarding discipline and bcba so we're gonna kind of introduce the show and then we're gonna get into the different parts because i feel like it's yeah. everything's really nuanced yeah. So today's the topic is disciplining and setting boundaries for children with special needs. And the reason why the topic came up is that there was a very controversial post that was posted on our IG, which we received so much feedback. There are two sides to this, which is very, are various, are obviously pros and cons. Um, but I feel like it's not as black and white as people want to make it seem. And, um, you know, this is definitely a deal breaker. And I feel like people their style of parenting differs a lot, but like, I feel like when it comes to children with special needs, people want to become a monolith, but it's really not that because our kids are, mm -hmm. our kids' needs are just as different as they are, right? They're very, they're like snowflakes. Not that they're like special little snowflakes, but mm -hmm. like they have all these differences in behavior. Yeah. And um, I feel like there's not a one size fits all necessarily. But the story that we are talking about is this mom that, um, what is her name? So I took notes, y'all. You know how I am. Um, her name, her last name's Ulrich. Um, they were saying that she was being cruel because her son, actually, that day in school, she he put his hands on people, and it was his birthday. So that day, she decided to take away, like, um, he was going to get an iPad and Robux or something. Mm -hmm. And mom decided that that was not a... Uh, a good idea so she decided to have him write an apology letter i mean he still had the option of playing with other things 
So like it wasn't like he was just sitting in a corner and like completely punished, but she didn't give him the thing that he was um motivated by. So the behavior that he was doing, he was doing it on purpose to escape. So every like I've spoken on the show before, every behavior has a purpose. So his specifically was escaping um the school environment to go home, obviously to play Roblox and do all these other things. So mm-hmm. um yeah, so I know you girls um, had a chance to read the article and um, talk about it. So um, whoever wants to jump in, that's cool with me. Um, I'll go. I'll go first. I mean, mm-hmm. I read the article and I, I was completely like, OK, like that sounds good to me. You know, like he did something bad. He needs to understand that this is what he did. Like if he doesn't get it now, then when is he going to get it? So like we've got to do it now. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Like. I'm going to obviously take away what you want. I would do it with the neurotypical kids. I'm going to do it with you too. I may not be able to do like have a whole full blown conversation. And so that you understand, you know, what you did wrong, but there is going to be a consequence because at one point I cannot have you continue doing this. So like, I felt like, you know, I read my son's already five. I was telling Marcy, like he's already starting to kind of test me. And I'm like, okay, let's do this because I, I just can't get let you get away with everything. I can let mm-hmm. you get away with some, but not everything, and especially not hitting. Like I, I don't honestly know what I'm gonna do if that has to turn that way because it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know. So I'm like, I can't, I can't let him do that right now. So I was completely okay with it, and like she said, like. You could still go and play. You could be on your trampoline. You can play, you know, with your Play-Doh. You could do or whatever it is that he likes to do. You're just not going to get what you really like because you got to understand the consequences. Mm -hmm. How did you feel Uh, about the article, Denise? I think that the, what drew everybody in was the birthday piece, I think, Mm -hmm. right? So you saw that, you were like, okay, so it's your birthday, you know, can you cry if you want to on your birthday, can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like that's why I was like, well, it depends, right? So I completely agree with the withholding piece, and I Mm -hmm. think that that is a parenting tool, not tactic. I think that that is a tool across the board, especially with mm-hmm. our kiddos. Like, what's mm-hmm. motivating? That's going to make you work or mm-hmm. listen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely agree with that. Where I think is like, it's a little sticky for me is like, okay, it's your birthday. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Is this yeah. something that you're going to do that I'm going to give in every single time that you're going to do it? But maybe on your birthday, you know, mm-hmm. but also yeah. it depends on... <laughs> And this is what I told Marcy is like, on like the comprehension, right? So like, do they even yeah. understand that it's their birthday? Are they going to understand that you're taking it away specifically on this day? This is what you were yeah. going to get as a birthday gift. Mm-hmm. Or is it going to be like, oh, I wasn't able to play my game. So I think that it all is like, that's what drew me in a little bit, mm-hmm. that little birthday piece. But I, I, I not disagreeing with what she you know, how she went about parenting. I just feel like that birthday piece is a little bit like, that's your birthday. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's where as like a parent, you have to kind of tread that line sometimes. Right. You know, because you don't want to be a drill sergeant all the time either. I know, you know, you can ask anybody in my family. I'm not a pushover, (laughs) you know, and any sense of the word with my kids, but I feel like it's your birthday. You know what I'm saying? So like, like you got to pick your battles. I, I, you got to pick your battles. Yeah, exactly. You got to pick your battles. Yeah. I mean, but you have to pick your battles with all the type of children, mm-hmm. you know, try, you know, try having a teenage girl. Like that was hard. That was harder than this. <laughs> like I'm like, so just letting yeah, you know. <laughs> That's the truth. That was a teenage girl going through a hormones. Woohoo. Oh my goodness. Benning, so one one of the things that stood out to me in the article was that she said that um she posted a video explaining her disciplinary decision and how it relates to ABA, right? Um, according to Autism Speaks, ABA therapy strongly focuses on reinforcing reinforcing positive behaviors while discouraging negative ones. So as a as as your take as a ABA therapist, um, or as a BCBA rather, like what 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 would be your suggestion or what what is your opinion about the decisions she she took specifically because one it was his birthday 
too, because like the behavior was like really um extreme. And then um the the motivation for the behavior, which was escaping and like getting what he wanted. Yeah, I agree um, with what Denise said, where there's a lot of variables to this. Um, and then the day specifically that it happened being on his birthday, like that just adds another kind of layer to it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, again, I don't, like Denise, I don't agree or disagree with every, what the parent um, did as a parent. You know, she's kind of entitled to discipline as she wishes. And I don't necessarily think that she did anything wrong per se again mm -hmm. the birthday piece adds that like oh it's your birthday mm -hmm. um but from a behavior analytic standpoint i would want to look at the antecedent interventions tried like are there a, like the comprehension piece does the um student know how to ask for breaks if he needs to escape the environment are there other things in place i saw that they tried like a token system for um robux mm -hmm. um but maybe the student's just not there yet so it's not motivating enough um so i'd want to see those other variables that come before the behavior because the thing about punishment is that it comes after the behavior already happened mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so i'd want to look at like what are some things we can do before so we what are the preventative measures um and what kind of goals are we working on to try to motivate motivate this student like why, do, why can he only play at home? Is there a way that we can integrate that into, you know, his class day to make mm -hmm. it a little bit more motivating until he yes. gets there? Um, so just really looking at if we are as the professionals and as his care team meeting him where he's at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. And then one thing, one thing that I do want to point out is that I feel like I have a, I have a, um, I'm like in this weird space that I'm a teacher and like a special education teacher and I'm a, I'm a parent of a child with special needs. And I don't know, like, I feel I'm not in disagreement with the mother. Yes. The birthday thing kind of was like, oh, it's just right. right. But then like, you know, our responsibility as parents is being able to have somebody that's going to be viable in society. And one thing stuck out to me that she said was that she's not always going to be there. So she, her responsibility as a, like a parent, regardless whether he has special needs or not, is whether he's going to be able to be independent. Mm -hmm. And um, God forbid, as an adult, like if he gets used to those types of behaviors, you know, nobody like police officers are not going to understand that that is his birthday that is his birthday <laughs> and that it's you know that that he has special needs and that they're gonna have a different approach for him i mean i feel like the police are getting trained but i don't know how much training much. there is yeah. and whether it's like across the board in every state you know what right. i'm saying and so that's that's my sticking point mm -hmm. what they know to like what they remember to check for these things for these yes. maybe like what they remember to think about that like maybe mm -hmm. this person doesn't behave like a neurotypical um person should i you know ask the parent should i check what do i do i think in a mm -hmm. in an emergency or a crisis they're might not remember to think mm -hmm. about that yeah i agree right. but i also feel like i read that he has like had like a pattern with that yeah. behavior it was almost right. like it wasn't like the first time that it was exactly. occurring so that's like to me is like you know something that you're definitely going to want to discuss with your team right if that's mm -hmm. becoming a pattern where especially if they're it's going to be like hitting or anything like that that's something that you have to have like immediate interventions immediate. for right mm -hmm. because if that's something that you is even a possibility that's going to become a pattern like you have to think about what's coming beforehand like maybe the program is too rigorous like something's going on is like the child not physically well you know right. i know when well, my right. kiddo's not feeling well and something sometimes it takes a couple weeks for mm -hmm. that yeah. to kind of manifest yeah. itself yeah. so i yeah. i would i definitely want to take that piece into consideration as yeah. well though like when i'm because when i read that i was like oh you kind of had a feeling that he was mm -hmm. going to try to get out of 
you know, yeah. yeah. So, Mm -hmm. you know, when I'm thinking about what's happening before, that's definitely a discussion that should be like, does he need a visual schedule? Is it, can you say like, you're going to spend this amount of minutes like doing something? So I, I want to take that into consideration too. (laughs) Like when I'm thinking about the, you know, his behaviors at school. And then maybe also reconsidering, is this the best environment for my child, for them Mm -hmm. to drive in? Yeah. Um, especially if this is a reoccurring thing, mm-hmm. uh, then maybe reassessing does, do they need That's more? Was gonna say. Do they need a different environment or mm-hmm. a smaller classroom? You know, all of these different yeah. variables that may be able to help them help succeed. Them. Yeah. Right. And I mean, you could definitely look at it as, as an opportunity, right? Cause if that behavior is going to be happening in your class, then you, you know, I, I personally, if it was my son, I would be asking what other programs are out there. You know what I'm saying? Because if that type of behavior is going to be happening, that's enough to where you can escalate that to look at other programs and talk to the district if you have to and see if there is a program with a smaller classroom. Yeah. One-on-one. But like he shouldn't even, like like you said, there, there could be something else happening as well. Like I did notice that last time my son got really sick, he was horrible behavior wise. And he had a viral infection and then Mm -hmm. those viral infections stay for like two weeks. And literally for two weeks, he, I had, I didn't even recognize him. I was like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, I I get it. I get those things contribute. But like you're saying, if she said there was a, a a behavioral pattern that he keeps doing this and that she thought he was going to do it on that day, you know, but that goes to show that she knew that he understood his birthday. I feel. Because mm-hmm. sometimes we think that they don't understand, but they are extremely smart. They get everything. Um, and I, I don't know how we can, you know, I don't know how sometimes you, you miss it and we don't miss it. But I know that he, like, I know, like, my son understands. And I'm not sure about other children, but he definitely gets when I'm upset and he definitely gets when he did something wrong. Mm -hmm. I get when I know when he's playing around, you know, cause he likes to do, I don't even know how you say it in English. Maldades. How do you say maldades? He likes to, um, not (laughs) wicked. What is the word? Um, he likes to play tricks. Some people kind of mischievous. There we go. Mischievous. mischievous. Like he likes to do little things. And I'm like, what is, what is going on? (laughs) You know, what is going on? I see he's like, (laughs) you know, like when people laugh, but I know when he's doing that. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, oh my God, is this kid Mm going to do this to me? We're testing the boundaries. I love you again. Right. So So one thing I'm like, okay, sorry. Go ahead, Susan. That was it. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to say is that um, when Aiden was younger, like, let's say, pre-k um kindergarten like i want to say all the way to like third or second grade um a lot of it depends depends on the teachers because the teacher the school he went to was like they had aba principals they didn't have any aba in the building however there were some teachers who were not as well trained and i would get these phone calls like oh he did this during school da, 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 da. but for me at that point aiden didn't have the comprehension of me reprimanding him at home and taking things away at home where it would Mm -hmm. stick and he would understand why he was being punished, Mm. you know? So that's another thing to take into consideration as well. It's like, you know, what are you doing at school to really curtail the behavior and also kind of understand why it's happening and like come up with a, a a comprehensive plan, like Belen said, to be able to avoid, not, not avoid, but like prevent the behavior from happening Mm -hmm. or to, um, anticipate Anticipate. situations that are going to trigger this behavior and change it around for the child in a way that it's going to be more positive for them or that they're going to learn different skills to cope. Right. Now you bring up a good point now that you say that, because I'm sure that consequence wasn't immediate. Um, So in my training and my professional background, whatever reinforcement, punishment, whatever it is, has to come immediately after Mm -hmm. so that, you know, to make that link. If it's too delayed, if, you know, the kiddo, we had to wait for mom to come pick him up. He waited in the office for an hour, however long, let's say, um, and then had to go home. And then it occurred, you know, there was too much time. And depending on the kiddo, he may or may not have connected the link that because I did this, this happened. Yeah, that makes sense too. 
Right. And then another piece of the article was like, he had to write a letter. Mm-hmm. Like she made him. So I feel like yeah. it was like a lot of different pieces here. Yeah. Like, okay. I totally agree with Marcy. Like my son is nine. He understands consequences to a certain extent. It's not something yeah. where it's like a true understanding of like, mm-hmm. this is what I'm doing. There is yeah, an yeah. immediate like, you know, my son's favorite thing is the iPad. Like, if I'm taking away the iPad, he, he understands. Knows. Like, oh, man, I got to do X, Y, and Z or uh-huh. I'm not going to get that uh-huh. iPad. But uh-huh. he's not going to get, like, I came home from school. I did something at school. Now you're not letting me play the iPad. Why? Yeah. Like, uh-huh. I didn't do anything in this situation. Uh-huh. So I right. get that. But yeah. then, like, I f- how old was he? Wasn't he, like, 14? How old was the child? Yeah. I couldn't find the age. I couldn't find the okay. age in the article either. I think yeah. he was, like, a teenager. Yeah. Maybe. I think he's an early teen. And the first one that, that you sent, like, I think it, I think he says that he's, like, 14 or something like that. Right. And I think that that's where, okay. like, maybe that's why um, there was that letter and, like, the withholding mm-hmm. of the gifts. and the Because I feel like, you know... Every, like we've said from the beginning, every child is different. Like there is, there are kiddos on the spectrum that are, they get it. They mm-hmm. understand the letter. They understand the withholding. They get all of that. They understand that if that happens, like they can tell you what happened the last time X, Y, and Z. Like my kid could never, first of all, my child's not speaking, but even like just understanding them and like mm-hmm. being able to walk through that with you. I think that that's, you know, you don't want to just like throw all these things at them. And like, I'm parenting in a very positive way here. And like, they're (laughs) not, they're like, okay, like I'll play my game tomorrow. Like, you know, or I'm going to do that same behavior tomorrow, you know? So, yeah. And that'll be the indicator of whether that punishment was effective or not is if it, if it's not reducing, then it wasn't a punishment. It wasn't, you know, whatever we wanted it to be. And you know, we got to rethink our plan now. I had a student that used to um, put his hands on teachers and then um, what they would do, I guess it wasn't the right setting for him. They would like call EMS or call mom, which I don't know how, like how legal that is now in New York city. (laughs) However, that was what was happening. Right. Um, the kid put his hands on somebody and it was like melt, like complete, like World War Three meltdown on the floor, screaming like we would have to leave him alone with the dean to um, take care of him. However, it was a the the motivation for behavior was escape. So like mom would pick him up before the EMS got there, and she'd be like, "Oh, do you want McDonald's?" So like to me in my head, because he knows what he's doing. Like he like he knew. Like I knew this child, and I had seen him in the classroom. He knew what he was doing. So. Okay. Her, like, offering him McDonald's is kind of like, oh, my God, good job. Thank you for, like, fucking up the teachers. Like, you know, thanks for, like, hating everybody and, like, messing up the classroom. And here's some McDonald's because, like, oh, my God, I love what you're doing. So, mm-hmm. it, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, it, there's a lot of sticky situations. But, like, that, that um, I kind of want to go in a little bit into the ABA principles. So, like, the definition of punishment, the definition of, like, positive reinforcement versus negative reinforcement and um how does that differ yeah i think that's a good um foundation to start with um so with reinforcement and punishment so reinforcement is something that increases a behavior whether it's desired or not desired of course we want to pick desired behaviors to increase Um, and punishment is something that decreases a behavior um Positive and negative, I like to think of them more as a plus sign and a minus sign because some, it gets a little bit confusing to think of positive and negative. Some people think that it's good and bad, and it's not necessarily that. Um, it can mean that in other contexts, but for ABA principles, uh, positive just means that you're adding something. So that's why I think of the plus sign. And negative just means that you're taking something away. Taking it away. Um, so, which can be reinforcing. Let's say, um, a student is having trouble completing their work. Um, they use a lot of escape behaviors to avoid doing any work because maybe that's just too much work for them. So maybe to reinforce their completion of work, we take away half of it and work on maybe shaping them up, you know, shaping that. that stamina to that level. Uh, but we'll first start by cutting their work in half and 
they'll start, let's say they start completing it, that would be a negative reinforcement because we saw the behavior increase as we took something away. Um, and then so positive is kind of like the, what we typically think of as like praise, giving stickers, high fives, um, mm -hmm. access to toys, um, things like that. So you're adding a stimulus to help reinforce. And same with the opposite, um, with positive punishment, you're adding something. Um, so like if I think the typical one is like giving your child chores for, you know, as a consequence, mm -hmm. you're adding something in a manner to, mm, okay. to try to reduce whatever they did before. Yeah. Um, and then the negative punishment was like this mom that took the the kids' gifts away. So, yeah. So I, I, like, I didn't really get the letter part too, Denise, because I'm thinking, and like you're saying, it has to be immediate, right? The taking away or, or like whatever the punishment is. Mm -hmm. I don't get the letter part. Because you know what I mean? Like it's, I'm sure it's hours later. And or, yeah. so I guess but, that would have been a positive punishment part of it. Cause she, she added something yeah. ask to her, for him. I wish I would know the type of child he was. Cause then I would, I would want to wonder like, did he really get that? Or is he just doing mm -hmm. it because she's saying to do it? Like, does yeah. he understand that he's doing it? Mm -hmm. I think that's the hard know. part about this case is that we, yeah. we still have questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's hard to come to a, yeah. it's very yeah. gray. Yeah. Cause my son is gray. not, not, you know, he's five and he's not speaking as well. He uses his talker to tell me some things, but like, and, and he's trying, but I can't see him understanding enough to, you know, do that. But you know, maybe when he's 14. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like Aiden now, maybe. He has, that, he has the permanence of like, oh, I fucked up. Like, mom's yeah. going to be so upset when I get home from school. Because okay. like, mm. one thing that did happen, um, and I want to just share, like, so when he switched from elementary school that he graduated and went to middle school, um, he had a spike in behavior. So the spike was that he was, I guess, avoiding work by like, um, hugging like the therapist really tightly like he wasn't mm -hmm. putting his hands on kids he was like mm -hmm. going after the therapist and i'm like what am i gonna do you know so at that point where we like came up with a behavior plan um basically we we, we came up with like a, a token economy like he needs to be able to check off all these things to be able to earn a star for every period and then if he earned enough stars he would be able to use the ipad during lunchtime or now the um what is it? The The timeline is longer. So he mm -hmm. has to wait until the end of the school day to be able to use the, the his iPhone now. So mm -hmm. um, the thing is, we need to we needed to figure out what was the trigger. What were the triggers and what was the purpose of the behavior? Because we I couldn't understand for the life of me what it was. I'm, I'm guessing it was escaping the work. Yeah. But it was just kind of like it was a lot because I was getting phone calls all the time. And then people were like calling me on FaceTime, like, oh, here, speak to your mother. And then he's, like, really not understanding, like, why are they calling my mom? Yeah. Like, yeah. what's going to happen? You know what I'm saying? So it's, like, there has to be some kind of pairing where you really understand what the child's cognitive levels are and, like, whether they have that permanence in their brain that's going to be, like, oh, man, I'm, like, I really messed up. Like, I'm going to get in trouble when I get home. Yeah. But, like, as far as what Belen is saying, like, there needs to be like an immediate consequence. So like you calling me like, okay, I get it. I want to know. However, mm -hmm. there needs to be some kind of behavior plan put in place right where there. they're getting consequences right there to their behavior so that it'll um, decrease the unwanted behavior, you know, long term. It can't be mm -hmm. that you're waiting to tell me after he's already home and I'm just like, okay, so like, what do I do? What do I do you know? now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause so it's like, like, what do I like? Do I punish them? Do I talk to them? Like, what what is the proper approach that's going to mm. really have an impact and give us that wanted um, result long term? So what did you do, Marcy? Now you have to tell me what happened. <laughs> uh, no, he eventually, like, we came up with the behavior plan with the stars and stuff. And then now he's at the point that um, he hands in his cell phone before he gets to school. Mm -hmm. um, and he doesn't he just uses the technology at school just for school work 
but it was a long time. It took like the whole first year. So I was constantly getting phone calls and then like um the the behavior plan started working more, so it it got reduced. But now he's good. Like he doesn't really have much many issues. Um he's able to talk now. And then one thing that we do do in the morning is that we have like a checklist. Okay. Um that I just remind him of the expected behavior. So like we keep our hands to ourselves. If we need yeah. a break, we need to ask for one. And then the thing is I, I gave the, the teachers the same exact thing. So his one-to-one goes over with, with him in the morning while he's having breakfast. And mm. I do it before I put him on the bus in the morning as well. So that has been working for us um, for the past year and a half. So we haven't seen that behavior anymore, but he does have his moments. Like when he's not feeling mm. well, um, but more, more, more than anything, he'll like fall asleep in class, which mm. I'm just like, what is it that is not happening at school? That's not yeah. motivating him enough to stay awake, but right. that's another story for another day. But yeah, yeah no, that's, yeah. that, that, that's what worked for us. I think that collaboration yeah. piece is really important. Like that, all the, the parents, the teachers, any Mental note. therapists involved, like to be on the same page and, you know, have all of us having the same checklist, all of us yeah. having the same you know, intervention plan. If this happens with you, if this happens with me, if this happens at home, we're all kind of on the setting same the same expectations exactly. across the board and yeah. being consistent. Yeah, that that's one of, another big thing. Um, in ABA, I know that you guys, especially early intervention, you guys work on potty training, right? Um, so. So when I when I was teaching six to one to one my first year teaching I had a child I had a couple of children that were not potty trained. Um, some parents were on board, some parents were not. So it was kind of like it was hard to see a result in the behavior, like a decrease in like you know having accidents at school when the parents weren't following through. So that's a big that's a big thing, like having that collabor- collaboration and everybody being on the same page mm-hmm. with respect to what they want for that child and like what the goal is going to be long term. So yeah, like this parent, um, I was like potty training her child. She was great. She wouldn't have any accidents at school. And I would tell grandma when um, she would pick her up. And as soon as she got there, she'd put a, a pull up on her. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't like, follow through. I'm like, I would have a heart great. attack. I'm like, you know, having all, like, having all these like, cause you know, I don't know, potty training is so hard for kids. It, it, psychologically, there's like, um, there's a there's a piece there where where kids have issues with like mm-hmm. evacuating in the actual toilet and then like obviously if you ha- your child has sensory issues bathroom can be scary the toilet like the can flushing be scary. of the toilet mm-hmm, yeah, and then yeah. like where does everything go like you don't know you know so yeah you know we're working with all of this and then the parent is like in one fell swoop kind of like ruins like, what you guys are doing saying. you know forget that uh, no yeah man. i always tell my families i'm like i can't do it by myself my rbt cannot do it on their own we all need to i'm like at the end of session they're gonna let you know what interval they're on so that you can be taking them every 20 30 40 minutes whatever they finish yeah. off at <laughs> um and then sometimes i train even like the older siblings and that way I'm like, if mom can't do it, you got it. If yeah. Teenagers in the home or whatever, grandma, anybody, gotta, like, everybody saying, needs to know. You need a special training for grandmas. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be on point, everybody. And then all of a sudden I took them to my mom's at the beginning and she put them a pull up and I'm like, no, I don't care if we have to clean pee. He has to learn. Mm-hmm. Still working on number two. I don't know what it is about number two. He doesn't always want to do in the potty. But we got number one and we got nighttime so far. I'm going to say knock on wood because anything can change, right? They regress yeah. at all times. Yeah. But Shout out to I, him, though. That's so yeah, good. Yeah, yes. but, but number two is a challenge to this still. So I'm like, okay, well, I got yeah. one. So I'm going to take my I think my given experience, number two is always like they'll get pee really quick. I've never had a kiddo get them both at the same time. No. It's no. always like one first and then we work on the other yeah. one for some so reason. We're still working on the other one. Yeah, number two is a little but bit aversive and I'm like, I'm take like, your time. We'll keep practicing. We I'm do like, like exposure things. So like balloons, then we shape them like a, a butt and put peanut butter so that they can like practice <laughs> wiping. <laughs> we practice oh, all the steps, one. all the visuals. That's a good one. I didn't it's even think about one. that. I love that. that. And I was thinking, I've never I, heard of that one. Gotta make it fun for them. I, I'm, 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 yeah, that's good because I was wondering, like, how do you get them to white <laughs> if they don't understand? Right. Okay, that way they know, like, when to stop 
and when they can ah. be considered clean. So, I mean, I guess if the child has a peanut allergy, you would do, like, pudding, right? Yeah, yeah. and it really, really yeah. can be anything. Yeah, yeah. Or Nutella. Nutella. <laughs> I think some of it has... Sounds about right, right? right? Nutella. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so what are some techniques that we can give parents? Because I always like to leave parents with some kind of like takeaway at the end of the show that they can use or, or like takeaway regarding, you know, deciding whether disciplining like the old school way how we were raised as opposed mm -hmm. to like, you know, disciplining this new child that has a different approach to life or like their brain is wired differently. Um, like what can we leave the parents with? I would Whoever say number one, in. communication. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, my son is nine now. And, like, the little things that you're able to do when they're younger, like, push them along somewhere. Like, guide mm -hmm. them. Hey, I need you to do that. I, we can't do that anymore. I would pull my back out if I tried to lift <laughs> his dead weight. Oh. So, I think that, like, even just talking. Like, that's yeah. really, like, try to communicate as best as you can. Slow down your speech. Use less words. Don't look for eye contact, especially for like my kiddo. Just make sure that they're listening to you because yeah. like normally, even if you're upset in that moment, like sometimes you can't, you know, have your great low voice. So even if yeah. you are a little bit elevated, slow that speech down and also just try to communicate because that's really the only thing that's going to work at that moment because yeah. your child is going to be upset, especially if you're trying to intervene mm -hmm. in a discipline moment in like not the school, but just like you with your child. That's the main thing. Just really try to talk to them, slow your speech down, use less words and yeah. reinforce and repeat things. Like, you know, my kid needs to hear me sometimes four to five times until he can like calm himself down and hear me when he's yeah. upset. So, like, don't be afraid to repeat. I mean, sometimes, like, in my own life, I'm like, okay, I don't have to repeat for adults this much. Like, just because it becomes a habit, you know? But that's definitely, if I would leave some a parent with that, I would say, like, slow down, speak slowly, use less words, and try to communicate as best as you can. I'm going to say thank you. <laughs> because I need that. <laughs> I'm still working on this. I really don't have much you know um to say to some a new mom because i'm still like a new mom um but the breathing techniques have helped me so when i feel like i'm frustrated with him and it has happened a lot more times than i want i start to do the breathing technique with him i'm like this and so when he sees me like doing that he re I, he's noticed like oh she's she's upset because i can't I'm like, okay, the screaming is getting him scared and it's making him worse. So I'm like, I can't do the screaming. I noticed that. And I have to minimize my words. I've noticed that as well. So it is an amazing reminder to, to us new moms uh, in this game. Well, I say it's a game because it is literally. <laughs> You're in I there. Never, I never know what's <laughs> going to happen. Uh, you know, it's not like a monotony here. It's a different game every day. Um, right. And so I noticed like on the days that I'm really like super frustrated and I can't get him to get to get it. Like I will just sit on the floor with him and we, he doesn't look at me, you know, but I'm just like, and when he sees me doing that, he'll be like, and he'll try to breathe with me. And then we just, you know, he'll sit on top of me crying. And then we're both crying at one point. And then we're like, okay. And I'm like, are we calm? I'm sick. Breathe, breathe with mommy. And then we both breathe. And then it's like, okay. And then I just redirect. That's what I've learned. Like redirect into something completely different because at this point, I'm not going to win. He's not going to win. I have no idea. I don't even know what happened because we already escalated. So that hit the reset button. Yeah. So we like reset and we just like, okay, uh, Play-Doh, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> something else like that he really likes. And then, you know, and that, and that has helped me, but I have to constantly remember like, you know, hey, Susan, he's not going to get it. So let's not say as many words. And like you said, like, just slow it, slow it down. But sometimes I'm like grabbing him and like taking him out of the element and bringing him to his room and like, because whatever was happening down there, it wasn't going to help. Mm -hmm. And so 
you know, yeah. I feel bad at that moment because I'm like grabbing him. And then I'm thinking to myself, what is going to happen when he's nine, you know, 10, 13, and I can't yeah. grab him like that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. why I'm like, let's do the breathing. So maybe that'll keep, you know, in the head. Okay. She's pissed. Like she's breathing heavy. I love that you're modeling those behaviors already though. Um, yeah. That was going to be part of my suggestion is to model yeah. the behaviors that we want to see. Mm -hmm. So when he's seeing you, okay, she's pausing, she's taking deep breaths. Uh -huh. And I think eventually we see our kids pick up on those things as well. Yeah. It might take them a little bit longer or they might, you know, need a little bit of time to process before they realize like, oh, this yeah. is actually helping these deep breaths. Maybe I need to squeeze something yeah. or mm -hmm. I have a, a corner I can go to a little nook yeah. that makes me feel safe. Um, so just modeling those yeah. things yeah. for them. I know it can be hard in the moment and we're escalated and they're escalated and just remembering that we want, you know, they copy everything we do, monkey see, monkey do type mm -hmm. of thing. And if we don't model that for them, they're they're gonna just, you know, do what we do. Yeah. They're gonna scream when we scream, they're gonna react the way that we react. Yeah. Um, so just sticking with it. So that having those coping yeah. mechanisms, knowing our own, um, escalation Triggers. cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's something called the behavior escalation cycle and we all have one. Um, so knowing our kiddos behavior escalation cycle, knowing our own so that we can catch that in ourselves and, and, you know, yeah. check ourselves. I need to breathe a little bit. I need to take a moment and say, you know what, son, I'm going to mommy's yeah. a little bit overwhelmed. I, I need yeah. a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm learning like with that. him. Every, every, every episode I'm learning with him. I'm like, okay. And honestly, our, like our, our behaviorist, she gave me that technique. She was like, when it gets like too much, bring it back and mm -hmm. just breathe with him. And I'm like, so, uh, you know, if, I, if it had to happen, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's happened enough times that he's like, okay. And he'll still be screaming and I'm crying while he's screaming, but we're breathing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something he'll <laughs> definitely remember, you know, because like now that you are saying that, like, I just remember so many times when my son was in preschool, like just that counting that back from 10, kneeling down to his level, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, holding his hands, doing squeezing, yep. mm -hmm. you know, just to calm For him sure. down and help him regulate. They remember that, you know, mm -hmm. and Sometimes, you know, now the meltdowns aren't as frequent. They're just, they're bigger. They're bigger. But they're fewer in between, but they are yes. bigger. There's more emotions there, right? And so, but he still remembers when he, when he's in those really deep meltdowns, I still, when he's at a point, because sometimes you got to let them get it out if it's a meltdown, yeah. um, I do do counting and he does remember that. And sometimes it takes many countdowns and sometimes it's that, rhythmic thing and you know like marcy said like we we they model what we do so like kundalini that definitely has helped me a ton just because what do we always hear marcy like the breath will carry you like you know so i feel like that's definitely always go something, back to the breath yes and that's something that you want to offer to your children as early and as often as possible because that's something that they can use even when you're not around. Yeah. yeah. And teaching them like actual breathing. Because the thing is like a lot of sometimes the breathing techniques are like very shallow breaths. But like teaching them like belly breathing, like mm. bring it, breathing, like bringing the breath all the way into mm. your belly, holding it and then letting it out um, is so important. Another thing I wanted to touch on is that kind of. I came from the school, I'm 40, so I came from the school where like they thought about like pelas were like everything to like quote-unquote fixed behavior i'm not like people are entitled to do whatever obviously don't abuse your child however like i feel like if your child is having an issue with violence you responding with violence is not, not going to help. curtail that behavior so just like belen said and um you ladies said your child copies everything that you do so you putting your hands on your child when they're being aggressive is not gonna be a good consequence. Uh, not 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 a good consequence. It's actually gonna increase that behavior instead of reducing it. So it's it's. I feel like thinking outside of the box with respect to discipline and and um and punishment. Um, outside of what we were raised in and kind of. I know soft parenting is like all the rage now, but like thinking about soft parenting, like how can we 
address these individuals who have all these feelings and they're, um, you know, having their own experience, which we don't own. Um, mm -hmm. How can we support them in becoming like adults eventually, even though they're like these little beings right now, but um, we're responsible for them yeah. being able to be like proper people in society. So definitely, you know, teaching them coping strategies that are positive is going to have success in the long run, even though in that moment, like, let's say, you know, like Susan, I felt that like what you were saying, like, like in the moment you're like, okay, but like, you know, long-term it's going to help yeah. so much. Yeah. 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 No. And learning yeah. And, I, and teaching them to advocate for themselves yeah. saying, I actually prefer this, or mm -hmm. I don't like this at all. I don't want to do this. Go, is there another option? Is there, you know, whether that's through, whether that's vocally signing yeah. through their AAC device, yeah. whatever it is, just teaching them to teaching them that yes and no, yes, I want to do this. No, I don't want to do this or it's not preferred. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and sometimes it's just giving them the opportunity for communication. Cause like, mm -hmm. you know, like commenting is not something that my son is able to do a lot of yet, mm -hmm. but if there's one thing that he knows what to do is request with his talker, mm -hmm. right? He's going to know how to imagine. request a food. He's going to know how to request yeah. his iPad. He's going to know how to request a show. He's going to know how to request a break. He may not tell you, I don't want to do this, but if right. that talker's around and they know that talker's charged, they know they have access to that talker. You are constantly, you don't want to talk about reinforcing behaviors. Mm -hmm. I was a little quiet during potty because we still struggle with that in my home. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if there's something that I'm always reinforcing with him is that talker piece wherever he's at, mm -hmm. right? Because when you take away a child's ability to communicate, mm. that is not allowing them to be functional mm -hmm. you know you want them to have functional communication and that mm -hmm. talker use it like you know just have it out yeah. you're having a meltdown yeah. they may not be able to tell you x y and z but they might be able to <laughs> request something that they want mm -hmm. they sh you know and that's something that that you know you want to have that availability like don't just leave the talker for school like the talkers mm -hmm. for home yeah. as well you know, know. what i'm saying like yeah. Yeah. make them use that requesting for a food they'll start using it for other things yeah. mm -hmm. so yeah. i i know break we've never used that in my house but he started using it because he used it at school but we use the talker for food all the time mm -hmm. you know because that's yeah. motivating I do it for food. The, the the device is motivating so mm -hmm. you know give them that access to their devices you know because like my child may not be able to tell you i really don't like x y and z but they might mm -hmm. be able to hit break yeah and yep. that's i don't want to do this so mm -hmm. you know meet your child where where they're at you know and let's not expect perfection you know yeah. out of ourselves we are navigating yeah. very difficult waters Oof. you know parenting and Preach. disciplining <laughs> kids i know marcy i'm almost 40 this year too and let me tell you like i never saw this growing up like I never really did. Like, so for me, like I was never around, like my cousins didn't were neurotypical. Everybody was neurotypical. So for mm -hmm. me, like parenting and disciplining, this is all new waters that we're navigating. Mm -hmm. So let's give some grace to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let's understand that our journey is not going to look like other people's journey. Mm -hmm. And we have to be okay with that too. And we're going to lose our temper sometimes. That's going to happen. But mm -hmm. like, Definitely, I hear Marcy, like, let's be a little bit different. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Let's not just like our kiddos feel so deeply, even though they can't mm -hmm. communicate. So you got to understand, like, they're feeling you. Like, yeah. they mm -hmm. feel you. Like, yeah. they under, like you said, they understand you're they upset. Understand you. They're getting yep. it. They can't communicate to you. Sometimes, you know, they'll give you that little extra hug at the end of yeah. the night that you weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. That's their I get it. You know, yeah. so like, you know, they're communicating yeah. with us and they're understanding. But, yeah. you know, let's all be. Give yourself you know, your flowers. Ooh, exactly. You well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 be, I beat you all because I'm almost 50. And let me tell you, being raised in our, my generation, gen generational trauma to the fullest. Mm -hmm. Like, so I have learned a lot with my youngest because I did do the, I was always, I was raised with corporal punishment. So mm -hmm. like, that's how they did to me. So I did it to my daughter and, and my son, I didn't do it. My middle child, I didn't do it as much to, but I also, you know, he got a, a few cocotazos, you know, a lot. And then this one, obviously I, I can't do that. And so I have to, I have to retrain my brain and myself mm. 
And that's why the, the breathing comes in a lot because I, that's the first thing I try to go to. And I'm like, oh no, I can't do that with him because I don't want him to turn around and do that because he's a, his brain is wired differently. Yeah. Even so, Sorry, Susan. Um, not at all. So this is another podcast alone. Okay, it's a different podcast. Okay, <laughs> even even the kind of like um, there were some parents I remember growing up with, like not my parent, but um, other parents that I saw that instead of like hitting their kid, they were like be like really like bad with their words, and and that's another thing that that's I feel like our one. kids don't understand either. So like. Mm-hmm. I know that our generation is shifting the paradigm and breaking generational um, stereotypes and generational yep. trauma. Cause I feel like mm-hmm. as Latinos um, we're all from like different backgrounds, but you know, we're, we're, we're shift, we're, we're creating a shift in the collective that is our kids are going to be able to have healthier remembrances of their childhoods yeah. and they're going to be able to come out into society yeah. and be functional members of society. But um, ladies, I want to say it was such a Thank pleasure. You. I would love to have you this all on again. <laughs> Yay. Yes. <laughs> so um, yeah. I just want to leave the parents with one thing, that there's no one size fits all approach. What, a, what works one day is not going to always work, work every single day. And that every child and every parent is going to have a different, like be ent- entirely different. So it's up to us as parents to decide what works for us and what doesn't that based on our children, you know, our children are the mm-hmm. biggest, uh, I guess, like on the spot feedback that we can have. Um, yeah. So with that, I want to close out the show and say, um, follow up my amazing guests at their, at their Yay. IGs. So I'm going to let you guys mm-hmm. start dropping your handles. We can start with Susan. Um, you can follow my business, create a cocktail. Dot, um, and then my personal is cocktails with Suji. Okay. Uh, you can, oh, 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 Denise, go ahead. You can find me on Modern Dominican Mom on TikTok. And mm-hmm. I'm also on IG. My personal page is Denise underscore B. And Vele? My Instagram is at Bilingual BCBA. I provide little like early education tips, parenting tips, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, so yeah, I love feel free it. to check follow. it out. All I'll right. Follow. <laughs> thank you marcy you're welcome thank you, marcy. Thank you. i just want to say that um if you guys have any questions at all comadres please feel free to send us a comadregram via email at marcy or slide up into my dms please visit our website www.comadrandopod.com to cap your latest merch if you can see i'm wearing, wearing one of this the hoodies yeah, for the you. show today um so one. you can get one of Me your too. own um on the website read our latest blog post find out about future events and um find out about new things um i'm gonna be having i'm gonna drop the handles of all the ladies in the show notes and i want to say thank you for spending time with your comadres bye thank you bye thank you, thank you.